a couple of you have sent me this story, but I had already knew about it by the time many of you had told me about it. But shout out to you for informing me. That just shows that you are informed as well. So in this image, you see a man by the name of Curtis Flowers, and he has been in prison for quite some time now. As a matter of fact, this man has been in prison for so long that he has had the conviction that uh, was put on him of murder overturned six times. I will say that again. This man has had a murder conviction attached to him that has been overturned six times times and they're trying to just toss it out because basically they're saying that they that this is a weak case they have they they're wasting time and they're wasting money trying to convict this man and they can't come to a solid conclusion of whether to convict him of the crime that he's been accused of or not but it also has another person attached to this and when i get to that person's name you will know because i'm going to stop in the middle of everything that i'm talking about and literally have to go in on just to remind you of why I have a huge, intense disdain towards that individual. The Supreme Court is throwing out the murder conviction and death sentence for a black man in Mississippi because of a prosecutor's efforts to keep African Americans off the jury. The defendant has already been tried six times and now could face a seventh trial. For what? That's my question. For what? It's obvious that they cannot come to a conclusion and they're practicing, practicing racial bias, which doesn't surprise me. I mean, look at where it's happening at Mississippi. And a lot of people try to say that black people don't go to jury duty and everything like that. Black people do go, but they do some underhanded stuff when it comes to certain cases. This is another another common example of them trying to throw a black man under the bus just to say that they threw a black man in jail. And it's in Mississippi, so it doesn't surprise me. The court's 7-2 to two decision Friday says the removal of black prospective jurors violated the rights of inmate Curtis Flowers. Justice Brett Kavanaugh wrote the court's majority opinion. Justices Clarence Thomas and Neil Gorsuch dissented. Now, I've, I've read the name of the person. I'm not worried right now about Neil Gorsuch. I already know he's a POS. If y'all don't know what that means, it means piece of shit. But I have to talk about the main one right there, and that's Clarence Thomas. Many of you have heard on my channel before saying that I do not like Clarence Thomas. I never have. Now, I was very young when the whole Anita Hill thing went down back in the early 90s. I was very young, so I couldn't really remember it, but I had to hear about it through stories and various coverage years later. But I was old enough to remember the act of treason that this man committed against a one Troy Davis back in 2011. I was old enough to remember that. And I was 22 at the time. Just graduated from college. If y'all don't know the story of Troy Davis, he was a black man who was accused of murder back in the late 80s and was sitting on death row when they said that he was found guilty. And he was basically sitting on death row uh, waiting to uh, face his fate. Sorry about that. I had a little um, disruption, but all they needed to do was vote to get this man off because DNA had exonerated him. He, they pretty much had no evidence to say that he actually did it. They already found something to clear his name. All they needed to do was have a decision come from the Supreme Court. That means Clarence Thomas included to overturn the conviction. They had everyone on the side to say that he was going to be able to be released and walk out of the jail that night, except for two votes, Anthony Scalia and Clarence Thomas. Anthony Scalia, as you already know, is dead. Thank God. And Clarence Thomas used to hang off of Anthony, Anthony Scalia, like how uh David Clark hangs off of Donald Trump. It it was like it was that kind of relationship. It's because of those two votes that Troy Davis ended up getting a lethal injection and he's dead now for a crime he did not commit and they knew he didn't do it. They knew it. That is the main reason as to why I hate Clarence Thomas and I never say that I hate anyone. It I hate I I hate Clarence Thomas just as much as about as I hate many of these palm colored races out here. At least I know what they're on. But Clarence Thomas, he's doing it again. This man has an intense, 
immaculate amount of hatred for black people, especially black men. I don't know. What is it uh, uh, with you, Clarence Thomas? Is it because that the men that you said that you're going to try to put to death or put in jail are better men than you are even behind bars? He couldn't he I can't even call Clarence Thomas a man. And that is why or one of the many reasons why Clarence Thomas disgusts me and I hate that man. I really do. His his wake up call cannot come fast enough. He is the original King Coon. Even more well, I can't even say more so than David Clark because people have died under his watch. But see, Clarence Thomas actually knows these people are innocent and he still wants to put them to death anyway. It, maybe it's a good thing that the Central Park Five weren't under his uh, under his rule, because all five of them boys probably would be dead today if it was left up to him. But let me continue. In Flowers sixth trial, the jury was made up of 11 whites and one African-American district attorney. Doug Evans struck five black prospective jurors. That's no coincidence. And they'll still say that's diversity. In the earlier trials, three convictions were tossed out, including one when the prosecutor improperly excluded African-Americans from the jury. And see, now that backfired on him. He thought that by doing that, that it was going to go in the way where white people was going to just automatically find him guilty. And that one black juror, if they had a heart, was not going to be the one. And they would have probably said overrule or try to find a way to overrule him. But as you can see, it didn't work. So basically what it's telling me is in the original uh, times that they did it, it probably was more black people on the jury but they said that they were probably having an issue with them so let's just get it down to one and maybe it'll work then but as you can see by trial number six it still didn't work but now they want to go for a seventh one and see they don't want to make it look too obvious by having a completely all-white jury but trust and believe if they could they would in the second trial, the judge chided Evans for striking a juror based on race. The two other tri two other trials ended when jurors couldn't reach unanimous verdicts. The numbers speak loudly. Kavanaugh said in a room and said in a summary of his opinion that he read in the courtroom, noting that Evans had removed 41 of the 42 prospective black jurors over the trials. We cannot ignore that history. In dissent, Thomas called Kavanaugh's opinion manifestly incorrect and wrote that Flowers presented no evidence whatsoever of purposeful race discrimination of course he would think that in the course of selecting a jury lawyers can excuse a juror merely because of a suspicion that a particular person would vote against their client those are called per sorry peremptory strikes and they have been the focus of the complaints about discrimination the supreme court's decision in batson versus kennedy in 1986 set up a system by which trial judges evaluate claims of discrimination in the race neutral ex explanations by prosecutors flowers has been in jail more than 22 years since his arrest after four people were found shot to death in a furniture store in winona mississippi in july 1996 i'm telling you they want this man convicted by any means necessary and he most likely did not do it. If they, if it took, took them seven, I mean, six trials and they're about to start a seventh one and he's been in jail since 1996 and they still can't get nothing on him. Then why even bother still to keep going? They just want to pin it on a black man who's most likely innocent. Like I would be stressed out if I was him. I'm not even gonna lie. He probably more comfortable just being in his cell than having to have to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth between the prison and that courtroom six times and possibly most likely a seventh. They just need to toss this one, but they don't want to do that because they don't want to make it seem like they got the wrong person, which to me sounds like they did. And they're doing this and they're putting pressure on those jurors to say he's guilty just so they can stop doing this or they'll, you know, to uh, say, well, if they say he's guilty, then we can just all go home. But as you can see, six trials later, and it's still not working. And nothing that that races whoever that prosecutor by pulling and ejecting those black judges, that's not working either. So they just need to go ahead and drop the case altogether. But I meant what I said about uh, Clarence Thomas. And I'm actually shocked that Brett Kavanaugh is actually saying, look, just drop the case. There's nothing here. There's, it's just pointless at this at right now. Like you're, you're trying to go for a seventh trial and it's not working. Even he's tired of it. 
But y'all let me know what y'all think about this down in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. I will talk to you in the next one.